Hello Pisces, welcome to your reading with me Cindy. This week Pisces, we're doing a reading that I haven't done in a long time. Um, it's called like how you've changed. So we're kind of looking at the evolution of you. We're going to look at who you were then, whatever then is. It could be like a week ago, a day ago, a month ago, a year ago, many years. And then who you are now. And because we're kind of looking at your transformation, we're also going to ask what lesson have you not fully learned yet? And then what lesson have you fully learned? Have you accomplished? And I'm going to do this to make it kind of interesting and, and deep and thought provoking. I'm going to use the wild unknown, wild unknown archetype, oracle, and tarot. So Pisces, my Piscus friends, let's get started. That's too many, <laughs> too many because this is complicated energy. These readings are not super light. <laughs> so Pisces, who you were then, who you are now, what lesson have you not fully learned, and what lesson, I guess, have you mastered? Okay, who you were then, the ocean, wow, goodness, that just feels like so watery and, and Neptunian and Piscean, doesn't it? Oh, it's been a long time since I've had this card. I might pause to do, to read the book on this one. The ocean is just like, it's so vast. It's also very fluid and it needs a container. The earth is its container. So something that in the past needing a container, you needed a container for you. Like you kind of had to mold to certain things around you. But that's like who you were then. It kind of makes sense too, doesn't it? Because I mean, Pisces is a mutable sign. So extremely emotional, extremely psychic and intuitive. Not to say that you don't have those elements of yourself still. But I feel like those elements were somehow needing to be contained in things that existed outside of you. So let's imagine that, what's going on? I had a scratch, itchy spot and the skin peeled. Um, like, okay, because we're talking about Piscean topics. So we're talking about like, um, could be esoteric information. It could be uh, your dreams, your fantasies, your creativity, um, you know, that whole realm. And let's say, let's say you wanted to be a poet or an, a writer. And you always had this persona of what like you would look like as a poet or a writer. You know, you would dress this way and you would live this way and you would do it like this. Like this is how you do it. But you never did because you were always in an environment where, you know, tweed jackets and corduroy elbow pads were not hip. So you didn't do it. You didn't do that. Right? Like you put yourself in the container. You were, it wasn't like you weren't yourself. You were, but you made it fit and mold into the containers that you found yourself in. Like, you know, the environments or the situations. I don't have to look at the book. <laughs> Came right out. Okay. Now, the cave. Wow, it's interesting. You're kind of in the same parameter of the book. These are both 30, 35. And 32. Maybe that's significant to you in terms of age or something, a number. Oh, the cave. Now you are reaching in. You're completely in a different element, for one thing. I mean, even though these are both showing up in the uh, numerically in the 30 zone you you went from ocean to cave and this doesn't even feel like you know an aquatic cave there's almost like some sort of hidden mystery about you or you're uncovering a hidden mystery it's like you find yourself in the jungle Ooh, funny. Now I've got, is that um, Bon Jovi? Welcome to the jungle. Where? 
else is going? I'm really curious to see where these cards go for you. It's kind of like you've taken yourself out of the container. You've taken a little bit of a chance here. And what you find yourself in is the dark mystery of life. It almost like it, it calls to you. I just, there's something that's really mysterious about the eyes that are showing up in that cave. And it's, it's almost like something that, you know, you tell yourself you shouldn't go in there. <laughs> you should not go in there. But yeah, it kind of calls to you. Like you want to go in there, but you shouldn't go in there. But you want to go in there. You should go in there. And I'm trying to figure out these two hands. There's like a masculine hand reaching in and a feminine hand kind of moving across. And it's moving across and almost like where the mouth to those eyes would sit. But there's an illumination taking place up in the, th that's actually, th that's above the third eye. It's at the crown. Like the unspoken word creates an illumination in an environment that you feel like an environment, a situation or something. It's like it calls to you. It, it, it pulls you in. It sort of seduces you. It's almost like an aspect of life somehow that's kind of seducing you. And part of you says, oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But it's where enlightenment exists. Wow, I don't know where you guys are, but this is a very Piscean reading already because it's just way out there for me. Okay. What lesson have you not fully learned? What is this? Oh, God. Thanatos. Now you got all these hands again. <laughs> you have all these hands in your reading. But these hands. Thanatos, though, is kind of like destructions and rebirth. and Now, what's really interesting is when I was pulling out these cards like a few weeks ago doing the different type of reading with these cards your spiritual success i think and activation the hands came out a lot maybe there's just a lot of hand cards i don't know but in aries they had this card for some sort of placement and it was like reaching it this is the funny thing it was like reaching your hand into a hole but it was a hole that you wouldn't put your hand into, right? Which is kind of weird. It was this card that brought that up, which is crazy because this cave has got the energy of that for you. It's like, cause I think I said like something that you value, your favorite ball fell into the hole. So you have no choice but to put your hand in that hole. So you put your hand in that hole and all of a sudden you realize there's something else that's been in the hole that's kind of reaching for you. And it's just this weird feeling like, oh, the hole looked creepy to begin with. You would not have put your hand in that hole if your favorite ball did not go down it. Like something that you lost that you needed to retrieve. That's totally coming up here for you. And it's almost like, I don't know, maybe it's a person? Because there's more elements of, like, human entity in this cave to me. It could be, like, a projection of yourself into the future and reaching for it and finding it. So the, the lesson that you haven't fully learned is reaching your hand into the uncomfortable hole, into the cave. Now, it's kind of fascinating how that works because that's kind of something that just came to me intuitively. And one of the first things, like if when you're learning to read tarot or oracle cards or whichever, one of the first things that you will always be told to do before you look at the book of any deck is to create what the card means to you. And I can't, like, this is an example of how important that is because the message is so clear. Like that, everything I said about that, reaching in the hole, that doesn't exist in what Kim Kranz wrote, but that's what I retrieve. And here it is in your reading. And it's almost like it's, it's crazy how accurately similar that is. So you're still, so where you are now, you are perfecting a lesson. You are perfecting a lesson. There's something about this lesson that perhaps feels taboo. There's something about this lesson that feels like it seduces you. 
there's something that that right like it's it seduces you but in the same breath it's taboo but it is your enlightenment so it's a struggle and here you are working on that so what have you mastered what lesson have you mastered yes <laughs> okay it's <laughs> very pisces too Okay, and when we go back over here, where you were then, the ocean, again, it feels kind of like very mutable and forming into the container that you need to be in. So you don't slosh all over the place, right? So with Eros, I'm getting like kind of the superficiality of relationship here, the superficial um, aspects of relationship, just because we've got this cheap diamond. Well, diamonds are cheap, but... Anyway, the diamond in the lips. You know, this is about like erotic love and passion and you've mastered that. So what is it that is this uncomfortable cave? If, you know, I was to, to, to just form a guess here based on what I've got out for these cards, I would, I would think that it has something to do with Connection it has something to do with connection, and it could be like real deep, deep, powerful love that is not necessarily like erotic or sensual. There's something else here, but yet this cave makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, because, but you're in the cave now, you're approaching the cave, the cave is there. You can't turn away from the cave. I just, these eyes feel like I'm mesmerized by the eyes. And it it, it kind of conjures up that feeling of like, you know, like a horror movie or something, you know, like this, you look in the darkness and there's a set of kind of eyes, but they're barely glowing. It only, like, that's the thing that's so intriguing. And if anyone was watching you in a movie, they would say, Pisces, don't go in the woods. Don't, go, don't do it. You know, you watch the horror movies, you're like, please don't go down in the basement. Why the fuck are you going in the basement by yourself? <laughs> You've mastered it. You've mastered it. Oh, the tear. The tear is at the bottom. I think I'm only doing one because it's too much. The tear. To me, the chair symbolizes the flow without needing a container. Because this, the ocean, any vessel of water, anything, it needs a container. It finds its container. It's almost like you haven't found the right container. Do you need to be contained? Water in some element, yeah, it does. Otherwise, it vaporizes. Perhaps you're meant to continuously transform. From vapor to liquid to ice. From vapor to liquid to ice. Oh, be careful with that, right? Because ice is almost like water's own natural capacity to contain itself. But then it's frozen. It's cold. The tear is the symbol of you free-flowing your emotions, your emotions need to free flow. It's almost like a big life lesson here, like like a life, a meaning of life for you. Well, let's see. The Oracle deck has to say. Oh no, the ocean, 
then the owl okay i feel like this like with air energy too like just really being kind of all right <laughs> this is a big switch here i don't mean a big switch in the reading it's still staying the same a big switch in you um this is like really knowing who you are but because you were in a particular container an environment situation family setting career whatever that is or was i think it's a was right because it's then you this container your containers have a lot to do with your self-identity like knowing this, knowing who you are in the ocean. In some ways too, I feel like you need, because it's ocean, like a very vast container, you do need an element of freedom of movement here. Who you were then, you knew quite clearly based on the container that held you. But now, this is so alien, the cave. Oh my gosh. You won't believe, look what you got. You got sea serpent. It's like you, right? In the cave. Feeling like you need to swim, but you can't. Like, so like, you have to walk through this. You have to reach through it protecting yourself you're protecting yourself from this but you're meant to go into it it just feels incredibly uncomfortable like you would lose yourself in some way you feel like you've already lost yourself and it could be an element of ego destruction there definitely is like shadowy energy here like moving your conscience to a new level through uncomfortable experience you are meant to go because too i want to say there's like yin yang energy with the masculine and the feminine hand with the cave and then i often i get that like this is like an ovum and these are like little sperm guys and there's just one, there is, there's just one there that's broken through. And it just reminds me of like two elements coming together to create something completely new that's never been created before. So it's almost like, well, now that's what you're meant to do. But you find yourself like, like the sea serpent, having like wanting to protect you, wanting to protect you and not allow it to become part with something else. Because the something else actually isn't a container. It's a literally like a space, but it calls to you. It's going to call to you for lifetimes until you go in it. I really feel like that. Like you're kind of meant to go in there. It's where the enlightenment is. You know what? I can't stop staring at the eyes. And you know why? Because I feel like it has something to tell me. And I'm trying to like, why do I feel so strongly about that? A, I feel like because the eyes, they're just a little bit, like they're focused. And then the hand doesn't come across. It's almost as if like it won't tell you unless you come in. Like, so it is that like, you know, it's got a little bit of a, like throwing candy out in the cave and luring, luring you in. But it lures you in because it's as if, if you want to find the answer, you have to come in. <laughs> so not fully learned, right, is moving into the uncomfortable space, but realizing that there's something here that's like, it's like that hole that you reach into. You're looking for your ball, but realize oh, there's another hand down here. What's going on? This is weird and creepy. But then it's almost like both these hands are trying to understand, you know, just through the tactile experience. Like, what is it that I'm touching here? What is this? So, not fully learned. The scorpion. Oh. There's a sense of betrayal with the scorpion that I haven't touched on in a long time.
The thing that comes in really clearly though with this is um this is a, okay this is about exploring how much you can take of an uncomfortable situation like how much more you can learn to be comfortable in the uncomfortable because the scorpion is uh, often to me it's like the straw that breaks the camel's back so that's just it i'm done <laughs> that that's it you've taken enough of something and then a little tiny thing sets you off you know but the hand is uncomfortable going into the tunnel and there's something about this that i don't want to go i don't want to go i don't want to go the lesson that not fully learned or mastered here is learning now but i feel like you're mastering it because you're sitting in it in the present so it is learning to move beyond what makes you uncomfortable and find comfort in it because that's where you'll find your peace Okay, then we have Eros, the lesson you learned. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Oh, Jesus, the earthworm. Containment. The earthworm is contained. You learned that. But, okay, so you've hidden a part of yourself through perhaps sensuality, um eroticism, erotic love, but yet you've contained yourself here. I mean, this reading could have something to do with love. The shark and the frog. Water, water, <laughs> even the whale, but it's in reverse. Cleansing. I want to say because the scorpion came up, it could be like toxicity, tox like um, betrayal. This is the toxicity. Betrayal, like how you've been betrayed. And then the frog too. These little green and orange and red frogs are toxic. But this is cleansing it's also a very cleansing card being cleansed with this water and again it's like free flowing water free free flowing water the tear is free flowing water and the shark is something hidden beneath the surface so there's something about your emotions that are hidden beneath the surface Perhaps they only free flow when you're incredibly upset or sad. Do they free flow in love? That is the question. If they do, it at least feels like it's a level that's beyond what you experience or partake in now. So we're going to the wild and no tarot. We're going to pull one. Uno. Oh, too many. Get back in there. Oh, they did. Good. That's good. Oh, devil, devil. The devil wants to come out, but I'm not really ready because it feels pretty determined to come out. But I guess that would have gone for then. You would have been the devil. I don't know. But, well, allowing yourself to be contained and constrained. then the world isn't that funny and what holds the water but the world that's crazy that is so crazy what holds the water what holds the ocean but the world the obvious too 
is that it's a completion of a cycle here. Yes. There's nowhere to go but into the cave. <laughs> so, and I do, I mean, I sympathize with you because it does feel like there's something uncomfortable, but it calls to you, it nags, like it's just, you got to go into the cave. So let's see that. Oh, yeah. The death card. It is the only place you will find your rebirth is in the cave. We really need to look at the cave card <laughs> to read that. You are in the middle of rebirth energy, big time with the sea serpent and the death card. Okay, not fully learned here is the uncomfortable uncomfortable aspect, well, perhaps of death and rebirth. The two of wands, not fully learned, is actualizing your dreams, is focusing on your dreams, but perhaps through a different emotional element. Is there a place that you choose not to go when you dream, when you fantasize, when you imagine? The lesson learned, mastered, is the six of wands. You kind of sort of managed to find success here. You managed to come out winning. You could, you know what? Okay, I mean, if you've mastered Eros and the earthworm, like really, and the six of wands, I feel like you could get through life by accomplishing quite a, f a number of things that many people would probably never accomplish. Um, and you do that, you can do that by protecting the most perhaps creative part of you but relying on the more superficial element of you and you know it's kind of funny because like this energy that you've mastered it would be easy for many people to just stay in it why not it's quite successful um it would stimulate and even, I want to say, stroke elements of well-developed ego, right? Like it would really, but yeah, you wouldn't have to invest too much of yourself in it. The Five of Swords and the Eight of Swords. Cutting out the biggest obstacle that sits in front of you. But the only way to cut that out is to walk into it. I'm going to do one of my quick edits and read the book. All right, all right, Pisces. So I'm taking some time with the book and I'm sitting here. And, oh, you know what you've really mastered? <sighs> You've really mastered keeping yourself out of the cave. <laughs> You've really mastered that. The cave and the sea serpent too just speak so strongly of like entering the presence of the divine mother, of a kundalini energy as well. Um, and I hear you sit right now with this. And there is so much emotion that runs through this reading. It's, in, it's insane how much emotion runs through this reading with the ocean the tear one of the interesting things with the tear is it says if you get the tear card and the river card which is the card that comes just before the ocean card you have too much water too much emotion is not flowing through you and i thought well what happens if you have the ocean and the tear because an ocean is bigger than the river there's a lot there's okay there's an emotional element of you here that you are so successful at containing and keeping hidden um, 
there's no way forward except uh, through the cave. You were protected in the cave. The cave is a very unfamiliar place. You will feel things in the cave that you've never felt before. So there's apprehension and there's fear. That's where you are now. It's a transformation. And what is uncomfortable because you are already at a capacity where you know quite a lot. You know quite a lot esoterically with the owl in the ocean. You've completed, you, like you can't know more in a certain element of what you've grown and developed. So you have to walk down a new road here in some other element that you've never explored that feels a little bit taboo, but it only feels taboo because it's a feeling and emotion that you can't, um, like you can't articulate it. You can't, you couldn't draw a picture of it. You couldn't write stories or poems about it. And because you don't know what's in there and it calls to you, but yet you know everything. So it must be something that you're not meant to know. And I feel like I'm almost, almost talking in a way that is like how you can convince yourself that you shouldn't go down into this cave. The cave is full of treasure. But then, you know, it's interesting too because the Thanatos card is here to remind us that um, death and rebirth is not something that takes place only once. It takes place continuously throughout every day and every minute and every second of our lives all sorts of different little cycles and things that are living and dying, insects dying all around us all the time on mass scales, just through natural life process. And you know, it's just so funny because you have the scorpion card and Scorpio is symbol of the death card in the tarot and you have the death as well. You are, you are a master at a evading this cave and I do feel that this cave has a deep emotional experience in it so that's what I have that's what I have for you yeah you may have based your dreams as well on how other people contained them or contained you or how you contained yourself really to fit into places. So there's something about that too where this feels unbridled. You're not contained in the cave. You're allowed to experience the cave. The cave is your enlightenment. You may feel like it. All right there, I'm gonna go do the extended Pisces. I'm going to use the same decks. I'm gonna look at transforming energies like around you and then future you. Thank you so much, Pisces. Until next time, do be gentle with yourselves. Bye.